This is Michael McKeon, a.k.a. Morris Fletcher, a.k.a. Chuck McGill. You know who I am. But it's time for Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. You're watching Inside the Gilliverse, talking all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. Brought to you by Stewart Travel Guitars. See the incredible stowaway travel guitar at stewardguitars.com. Also brought to you by Idea Bench, makers of hot rod inspired pedal boards and pedal board accessories at ideabench.com. Microphones for Inside the Gilliverse are brought to you by Rode Microphones. Now, please welcome your host, Eric Broadbent. Good evening, everyone. Great air drums. Thank you for joining us for episode 13 of Inside the Gilliverse, where we talk all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. My name is Eric Broadbent, as that man said in the intro, and it comes with great pleasure for me to introduce tonight's guest, actor Jeremiah Bitsui. You know him as Victor from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Jeremiah, how are you? AKA Eric Broadbent. There you go. We have, we, I can't <laughs> wait to show people that intro that we recorded earlier. That was hilarious. I'm like, Okay, am I am I Eric? Am I Jeremiah? I, I forget who's who now. But it was great to have you here, man. <laughs> looking good there. You looking? I mean, you you like your buddy Max? Like, how do you stay so freaking young? Oh, thank you, man. Uh, it's uh, I guess kids like uh, you know, my baby girl keeps me active, like we were talking before, yeah. and um, you know, I mean, like anything else, you gotta. It's it's our industry, and uh, it's tough. I mean, we're ten years later, and we have to. St- look six years younger i know right better call so so. (laughs) yeah that's good that's gonna be so weird like and i haven't really asked this question i've had this question down on paper for a lot of the guests that have come by but isn't it weird like kind of watching your life of the character in reverse you know it's like okay so i know what happened but let's we're gonna now we're gonna go back we're gonna get our my my character's backstory and build back up it's so crazy isn't it yeah yeah i mean i think for um I think everyone always, well, well, actors, most actors, they, you know, they do their own backstory Mm -hmm. and you kind of have your own assumptions of what, what you are, who you are and and what you were doing years before and kind of fill in the gaps. And so in this case, it's, it's kind of nice because I think everyone, you know, kind of wants to know how did these guys get to where they are now and what made them this particular person. So, you know, but it's funny. Sometimes people are like, you're the nastiest, meanest guy on that whole show. And I'm like, I didn't even kill anybody in Breaking I know, that. right? You know? Yeah. Call somebody a little bastard and point a gun at somebody's head, but that's about it. Like That's the same thing with Mark Margolis. You know? Mark Margolis gets like a kind of uh, stereotyped as this guy that's a bad guy. And I know it drives him crazy when people do an interview. It's like people, every single person who interviews him will say, oh, you've been the bad guy all the time. And he's not the bad guy. Like he's only been a bad guy in about 16 out of 200 and some odd movies. You know, yeah, you know, but except it, for it's Scarface, I, I hated him in Scarface. I know, right? You know, I was just, I was like, oh god, this guy. You know, are you are so you a big uh, are you a big fan of Scarface? Oh yeah, oh yeah, big fan. He played he he played uh the detonator guy, right? Yes, yes, yeah. And I yeah. remember Al Pacino was like, no, no, like don't you do it, don't you do it, whatever. I forget the line. He was, I yeah. should know it. Yeah, Stephen Bauer don't was on last. It, don't you do it? That's right. Yeah, and it, he, he, Stephen Bauer was on last week, and I, I was like a twelve-year-old kid last week. I was. I was oh, like, God. I'm trying to keep oh. my composure because I'm thinking hey, I'm talking to Manny the whole night, right? Yeah. Uh, so that was very cool. But it's we, we, that is cool. Every, every once in a while, we got to, we got a fanboy out and just enjoy it, right? And I know you're the same way as oh, well yeah. too, like, loving these characters. Um, and I'm going to throw something in reverse here for a second. I'm going to go say hi to a bunch yeah. of people here in a second. There's some great questions. But just so people okay. uh, know, you're not in uh, some Gus Fring super lab right now, uh, which may you never know it because some, there's some scaffolding going on. You want to tell us where you are and what's happening right now? Yeah, actually, we're here. Uh, so a little back, little, I guess we'll get into it, a little backstory. I'm an entrepreneur. I've been in business now for 20 years, which sounds like a long time. I just started when I was young, but... Um, uh, nonetheless, my my wife and I, uh, you know, a few years back, we just, I don't know, wanted to see when we both moved here, but to Albuquerque, and uh, she's from Chicago originally, and um, I'm I grew up here part of my childhood, mm-hmm. and then you know moved to LA like most other crazy uh, thespian types uh, when I was 19 years old. So, um, 
point being is what we're doing here is we're actually creating a coffee shop called dream lab and um my uh, construction company i have a construction company that turns 14 years old this year um and we do a, a lot of different so anyways nonetheless this is this is off hours work and we're working to get uh dream lab coffee uh ready to go and um really excited about that so if anyone's in new mexico um will be soft opening for probably until spring nice and then doing a big grand opening once you know restrictions everything open and back up in the in the spring so dreamlabcoffee.com uh, awesome i'm pretty yeah. sure we have that link I, I put a lot of links in the description and our good uh, help cool. from sandra lee and ladybug and everyone our moderators in the chat they're gonna be sharing those links throughout the program as well too you know, it'd be really cool. cool for your grand launch. You should get uh, you should get Gail Bedecker to stop on by with the uh, pour some some of his uh, patented great coffee. Wouldn't that be something? There you go. Actually, David? we've talked like so. It wasn't. Uh, I don't want to ruin it for people, but it wasn't actually like a functioning, um, you know, Machine. contraption. Yeah. But they do have these beakers and so these other things that we may make. You know, kind of into a functional pour over. Nice. So, uh, yeah, so stay tuned for that. If so we'll take some pictures. But yeah, we're going to have a lot of guest baristas as well. I was talking to um, Max Arciaga from, uh, you know, from Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul. And um, he's super excited. So you may see Max back there okay. in the uh, Super Dream Lab and uh, making uh, making some coffee with us. Oh, that'd And he be was great. like, yeah, I'm super excited. He's like, I'll jump in there and do a shift. So good, good. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. See that. I, I think, I mean, you're such a good person. Everyone wants to be part of that and, and be, you know, be part of your success and help out. That, that That's really awesome. It's, it's a contagious thing where, you know, like you're positive all the time, you know, and I've seen a lot of the interviews you do and it's just, it's, it surrounds people and I can, I can, I can totally believe why people want to jump, jump in and be part of it. So I, and I wish you all the success with that. Oh, thank you. Was that thank your you wife that was in the background a minute ago painting at the back wall there? Yeah. 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 I, I saw her there for a second. <laughs> I was just telling Eric, I said, I brought these lights specifically for the interview. And she was like, oh, this is nice. You brought some lights so we could do night painting. And I was like, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, lights are being put to use. back. Actually, it looks it probably looks better there than it would yeah. right here. So but, now you have no excuse. You can't say, okay, well, it's getting dark, hon. I got to go home. We got to go home. I can't see. I can't do a good job. So she's oh, going to yeah. keep you painting all night long. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, now at this point, uh, baby's in control. So yeah, whenever yeah. baby starts calling... Uh, this is usually our date night. Like I, think I know you told me, and I'm so yeah. sorry there was a, a miscommunication mis mis on the uh, on the dates. But uh, also, thank you to the wife for being so understanding as well, too. Oh yeah, no, I mean we've been working around the clock recently, so it's uh, this, and then on my construction side, we've been doing a whole bunch of uh, COVID relief effort stuff, and um, that's been keeping us really busy as well. So that's good. No that's problem. Good. This is a this is a relief. It's cool, cool. to be able to. Uh, you know, watched your show and um, always enjoy our, our fans from awesome. the show as well. So, well, that's that's yeah. one thing we love about the Gilliver's family is the fact that the every single person from the cast and crew they're they're just as much of yeah. a fan of the show themselves, but they also love the fans and they want to be part of it as long as as long as humanly possible. So we're all blessed for that. But I'm going to jump over some really cool questions. I've got some written down here. This one, the first one right off the top of the hop here is from one of our YouTube channel membership uh, members. It's from Karina. Sure. And I and we're talking off air tonight uh, through Facebook, right. and she told me about this. And I didn't even know this, so I never professed to be the biggest fan in the world of of these shows. I love the shows, but I'm still learning yeah. every week from all you guys and girls. She says Victor's death on Breaking Bad will go down as one of the most memorable, shocking, and brutal deaths in TV history. How many takes did uh, did you do, and how challenging was that scene? And then part two of that was also the fact that Brian Cranston's daughter fainted. At the Hollywood premiere of the episode proves that you all created something truly frightening. So I didn't know about that, but let's talk about the takes of that scene and how, and you know, a little bit about that as she asks there. Yeah. Great question. Thank you, Karina, for your, your question and your comment and your, uh, your attention to detail. But yeah, actually we filmed all day. Uh, so to give you an idea, we'll, we'll pull 12, 14 hour shifts, like, like no one's business. And so that, that death scene specifically just the cutting, that was a full day's work. So that wow. was continuous, you know, running around the corner, out of the super lab, into a shower, you know, rinsing me off, putting me back in fresh pair of clothes, back again. So I, I really couldn't say. I could only estimate, and I would say it felt like 
50 takes, wow. 50 some odd takes. And all I saw was a pile of bloody clothes and, you know, on the other side. So, uh, but it, it always starts before that, uh, of course, with any special effect. So um, back in LA, um, we went into the prop house, I want to say two or three weeks before and, um, you know, really worked on that, that splatter. And so it was a whole bunch of different types of uh, blood splatter. You had, um, you know, the, the pump, which would, you know, kind of, it would Real do spray. one, or they could kind of, you know, hold it and you'd get a little, a few squirts coming out. Like it's running out um, almost. Yeah. And so mainly it was the fitting, making sure that they had a good uh, prosthetic of my neck. And then they did like the Quentin Tarantino where it was like, you know, oh, which yeah. I don't think we ever use. And um, in the end, I think it ended up being the syringe, the pump. And that's that's what really works. They even had like a mechanical uh, air compressed. And that was like a little bit too strong. I could feel it. It was like that one was intense. Yeah. I could actually feel it felt like, you know, it, it actually it, one of the takes. It felt like like I had like it was re- I could really just I, had, I was in character at that point. Um, you know, there's points when you're in and out of character, but I was in character and I just, I felt this come out of me. It felt like, and it was pretty, uh, it was pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, and then back to the premiere, uh, here we are in, I think that particular premiere, we were at the Hollywood theater, I want to say. And if, um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Brian and his daughter were two rows back. And the original scene, I want to say, was an extra 15 seconds longer, which feels like forever, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And I guess it only takes like 45 seconds, if I'm not mistaken, for you to completely bleed out. So I think they did it in real time, the first take, and then they scaled it back after the premiere, and they were just kind of like, yeah, we better... uh, we better chill on that one, <laughs> but yeah, it was crazy. It was, uh, it was, it was pretty, um, it was pretty eerie on the night because we were all there excited, and then you know this happened, and, and we were all worried and, and concerned. And then, uh, yeah, next thing you know, paramedics are in, lights are back on, and um, and it was like, okay, let's. Uh, I think we may have ended it right there. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Oh wow! Well, I mean, it's, this is quite some time before, uh, like, the, uh, on, the, on the same network on on AMC, Walking Dead, you know, Walking Dead, uh, which I'm a big fan of as well too. You know, they they really got you know, especially when Negan came into the uh, the scene, you know, into the show, like you know, they were getting scrutinized for the amount of violence. So you know, you, you, the the producers and Vince and everybody, you know, were really kind of walking that line. You know what we can get yeah. away with, right? And that that was shocking. And it's yeah. funny that you mentioned that. Like you said, you almost felt like it was coming out of you. You were probably thinking, like, Giancarlo, did you go a little too deep on that prosthetic? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, luckily, we, you know, we're always very careful. So anytime, um, may I actually have a box cutter on me right now. Yeah, I bet you do. But, you know, they'll, they'll make sure, like, they'll, you have to, like, feel the tip. Right. And they'll make sure, like, here, feel the, you know. So you know what it is. It's not, it's not real. See, it's a, I think it was like styrofoam, or I mean, a foam or something. Yeah. Like a foam blade. Just, but yeah, thank you for the question, Karina. That was uh, very perceptive, and it was it was intense nonetheless. That was a good question for sure. And I, I I'm glad that you shared that with us too. Like you know, feel the tip of it because your mind. I mean, you're an actor, but you're also a human being. Your mind is thinking yeah. that's a knife. I, I, I'm going to be you know. But this is just to maybe to to as, as a footnote to what Karina asked. You know, you watch that scene and you watch Mike. And you watch uh, Walter and Jesse sitting there in a the chair and the shock factor on their faces. Now, I know they're reading the lines. A lot of times there's table reads and things of that nature. But was there much of a dress rehearsal? Like, Because those guys, I mean, they, they are the greatest actors around, but they seem to yeah. be overly shocked. Now, how, how did yeah. that shock factor um, hit them? Was it just the talent of their acting or was there, was there not too much um, dress rehearsal kind of thing? Or how did that pull off? So, yeah, they, they, for the sake of the prosthetic, you know, I mean, you have you have a few takes out of it and then um, there's a limited supply of of, uh, of prosthetics, of course, like anything else. So they want to make sure that we get it right. And so, you know, the rehearsals were I want to say, you know, no pun intended, but, you know, dry, dry rehearsals. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, once we got into it, uh, like they were you could tell you could see it in their eyes and so what you saw was pretty 
pretty much their their live reaction to what was happening and the blood splatter and the sounds and everything it was it was it was brutal it sure was it sure was yeah here's a, a funny comment from one of our good friends and channel members as well too from Eamon wise he says good to hear that eric has been practicing with a box cutter in the kitchen and cut his thumb so i'm not going to show my thumb but last night i i'm one of these people that i first of all are you good in the kitchen are you good in the kitchen <laughs> I hope to. I hope so. <laughs> okay. yeah, you know, it's funny is that you, you ask that, and I, I don't really get very many opportunities. Okay. My, my wife's a great cook, and uh, but I like. I, I hope I am. I what love what I love about that is when I ask you the question before you answer, you look to see if where your wife was. I love that. Yeah. yeah like, okay. Because if I say I'm good, I'm a good sous chef. I will say that. Okay. Well, I'm not. You know? I'm not. I've burnt our kitchen down almost twice. Um, and yes. last night I'm trying to help the wife. I'm in the kitchen and I I cut my thumb on, on a stupid injury. And it's my right hand where I, I play guitar with, right? You know, yeah. and, and it, oh, it's horrible. So I'm not trying for sympathy. I'm just stupid. Here's a question from another one of our um, channel members and good friends, Arabella. Now, you've already answered the question, but she has a footnote to it. She was going to ask you about the box cutting scene. Um, but her uh, uh, final part of the question, how did you react when you found out your character would die? And, you know, Michael McKeon was talking to Tom Schnell's last time when on the show and talking about the death calls and things like that. So did you get a death call and how did you react to uh, the fact that uh, Victor's about to uh, be taken out? Uh, yeah, so my call, and it's funny because in season three, I, re I thought, just like everyone else, I mean, you probably heard this several times, but it's just one of those shows that um, you pretty much everybody you, you feel is, is, is pretty uh, expendable except with the exception of, you know, number one and number two, uh, uh, you know, even them, even for, for Jesse and for, um, uh, for Walt, you kind of feel like there's an edge there that they, they may just take it over to that across that, uh, that table. So nonetheless, if you're a bad guy, you pretty much know that you're, you're on the top of the list. And, um, so season three, I thought that it, that was going to be it. And um, a lot of the crew, they were just like, you know, they were shocked that there was a dead guy that was living or not a dead guy, a bad guy that was living this long. So um, when I'd walk into to Crafty, into the um, uh, into the trailer for food, they'd start being, you know, dead man walking, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they'd, they'd yell out. So um but uh, yeah, long story short, I got a call over the holidays and, it, you know, it was uh, just a matter of timing because we were going to start once we were back from the new year. And I got a call uh, from, um, I think it was, I want to say Melissa. Okay. Bernstein. Wait, I want to say it was Melissa, but if it wasn't, I'm sorry, Melissa. But it was it was pretty it was pretty uh, it was pretty good. It was um, hey Jeremiah, I can't. Yeah, uh, uh, you know we're just letting you know, looking forward to it. You know we got we're coming back, and so glad you're joining us again. And um, we're gonna start this year off. It's gonna be exciting. We're gonna start it off with a big bang. And unfortunately, you're the big bang. Oh, and I was just like, ah, oh, you know, so, I mean, I knew it couldn't go on forever mm -hmm. and, uh, but she was just like, yeah, you've been, you know, you've been great to work with us. And, um, you know, we never expected the storyline to go even in this path. And now that it is, you know, um, that this is, this is the, this is the direction the season's going. So I thought I was going to go out like with an explosion or something mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, Victor in the super lab and yep. ends up blowing up or something. But, um, it, you know, of course, never even expected it was going to be by a box cutter. Because at that point, I hadn't even read the script. So, um, so pretty cool. Yeah, that's how I was. I was told that it was uh, my final. Well, coming as, up on my final day. As an actor, I mean, that's got to be the one of the coolest ways to go out. I mean, it's not like you just walk into an elevator shaft, you fall down, and we never see the body. You know, like okay, we. You know, like sometimes you hear these these stories of difficult actors, and okay, was well, like Charlie Sheen. You know, put him in front of a train. You know, he's gone. He's gone. Yeah. Do not man, right? Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, very, very, very cool way to go. I mean, iconic as well too. Um, we have a super chat question from one of our good people. Uh, Shashank Vachari says, Jeremiah, what was your, what is your favorite Gus moment from Breaking Bad and favorite Lalo moment, uh, from Better Call Saul? Great question. Okay. Favorite Gus moment from Breaking Bad. I would probably say, um, so just so I get it correct, this is a, the scenes that I was in or just, oh, just favorite, moment, favorites overall. No matter. Yeah. Okay. I, I would say that, you know, I, I think I I liked as a scene when he had dinner with Walt. 
like I'm a huge mm-hmm. fan of the movie Heat. Yep. And I don't know if you you remember in the in the movie, um, Robert De Niro uh, gets pulled over by Al Pacino's character, and off of uh, off of the I I ten, and he says, "Hey, you know, you want to talk?" And he's like, "Yeah, let's you know, let's go get a coffee." So they they sit at a cafe and they just have this conversation. And for me, that that it felt like that. You know, that scene. You have two powerful powerhouses, and they're having they're sitting there having dinner. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, that that was probably one as a fan, even though I wasn't in it. Um, who knows? Maybe I was. I think I was dead at that point, actually. <laughs> but that was my favorite, probably my favorite moment. That's a good one. Uh, with, and then um, Lalo. I really, I really liked Lalo. You know, as a character, um, I was I was super excited to see that they were kind of expanding and bringing because he has so much depth, you know, as far as like who he is. He's not just this brooding bad guy. He's like a bad guy with a pulse and he's tricky and he's just he's all of these things. So, um, you know, I would say for me, it's it's that same the same thing like him, him cooking um for for nacho Mm -hmm. uh you know that like there's the subtext there you know like you know they say that you know you're maybe it's just something with me and eating maybe i'm hungry right now but uh (laughs) i would say you know there's something about you know there's there's just kind of this juxtapose because like i think we all break bread you know showing that it's 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 a sign that a relationship is going to continue or that you're, you're you're making kind of um you're being volatile and you're sharing this, uh, sharing a meal. And, um, and he's just the guy that just doesn't really care. Like he's kind of like our joker for, for better call Saul. Yeah. So I really, I really love, um, I really love his character and such a cool guy. Like we've, uh, we, when the boys are, when we're all filming, we, uh, we go, go kart and he's just like a kid, like in real <laughs> life. Like he's just like, let's go play. Let's go do something. You know, that's incredible. Well, that's the thing too. When you get someone that's so like charming as him, and but yeah. yet so ruthless. I mean, he's like a he's like he you know he's a Gus Fring from uh, South of the Border, and yep. you know like he he you know when he comes over to uh, to Kim and Jimmy's place, you know this all smiles and everything. Like, is he going to shoot you right there on the spot? Is he just going to walk away? You never never know. And that's I mean that's the fear that you just don't know, right? You don't know. And he pulls that off. That's, yeah. yeah. That's that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I love those type of characters. You know, I'm a big fan of. Uh, you know, that of him just in general. Yeah, that's right. Well, I think a lot of that feeling, I, I'm sure you, like, you and I, you talk about heat, you know, good movies as well, too. I'm, I love both De Niro and, and Pacino, obviously with Scarface, but all those, yeah. you know, the, the mob movies, you know, just when you think, oh, okay, yeah. give, give, give you a hug, you know, a kiss, boom, you're dead. Like, you know, yep. the, the, when it's the happiest Good moment. Yeah, it's crazy. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Here's a question, Agreed. more of a statement from uh, our friend Eamon. Uh, and you, right. you showed uh, the box cutter a knife a moment ago. He says, uh, do you have any box cutters at home? And if so, do you have them locked away in a combination? Are they only that you know the combination for? So obviously, you, I, you know, you probably, <laughs> probably the box cutter is always going to be something in, in the back of your mind. You know, you're probably cutting stuff in construction and you're thinking, you know, this was the end of my character a while back, you know? Yeah. 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 Actually, we have, uh, and, and people laugh, like when I pull out a box cutter for practical purposes, you know, people are like, ah, you better be careful there, you know, or, <laughs> exactly. Or whatever. So, uh, yeah, we had, we were just actually working with a, a box cutter a few minutes ago and it's, and it's, uh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of those comments. Um, but yeah, actually we have, um, let me see if I, if I brought it with me. Um, I created some box cutter Velcro patches. Mm. And, I saw um, those. I, but I'm anxious to see yeah. my person here. I'm anxious to see my person. Yeah, we'll be selling them. You could find them online on our uh, breaking tab. TV, shamelessly plugs. Nice. That's where I saw them on your yeah. website when you sent me that. That's great. Love that. Yeah. And I, I don't think, I, I think I left, I'll have to, uh, we'll, uh, well, you'll just have to go to the website, but yeah, we have uh, a Velcro uh, box cutter patch, which is kind of cool. Nice. Yeah. I was, that, I was trying to think, where did I see them? But yeah, you sent me a whole li- list of um, all your various entities and that's where I saw on the website. So that's very, very cool, which we have in the description down below. So I encourage everyone cool. to check that out as well too. Um, so one of the questions I had for you, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be very uh, lean with questions tonight from myself. I want to give them all to the audience, but a okay. lot of times with the cast, when they come on here, uh, you know, like skinny Pete, you know, he talks about you know, auditioning for a role that wasn't skinny Pete. 
And, you know, yeah. you know, all these people do these auditions thinking they're going to be auditioning for this. And they'll, and, and Walking Dead is another good example of shows, you know, they're going to audition for, let's say, the role of Daryl. And I think, I think Norman Reedus auditioned for the role of uh, Merle, if I'm not mistaken. And he, you know, the role was actually for Daryl. Now, when you audition for your role, first of all, maybe tell us a little bit about the audition process. And was it for Victor or was it for another character? Um, yeah, it was for a different character. And yeah, it happens a lot uh, where you, especially with things that are like super secretive. Mm -hmm. So some of them, they're so bad that they'll just give you, and not bad, but like, they'll, depending on what you're reading for, uh, sometimes it'll be like man one, man two. And then dialogue, right? Like not even sharing character givens where you are or anything, which is really tough. Because um, I mean, not tough, but you just have to get creative and kind of fill in your own um, your own context where you are. You know, what time of day it is, everything else. Um, but yeah, when I first read for Better Breaking Bad, I was reading for the Los Pueblos Hermanos manager. Oh, right, yeah, which, Lyle. Yeah, yeah, and so um, you know. Uh, the process I, I, um, I think at the time I, I wasn't watching the show. And so, um, my agent was telling me, she's like, yeah, there's a show and tell me about it. And I was like, I was like, wow. Like the way she described it wasn't that good because it was more like, she made it sound like it was a, um, like a cable show. She was like, like a, like a public access show. Wayne's world. And I was like, oh, <laughs> You know, but she was she was basically saying it was a cable show, and you know, so there's this, uh, you know, it's this new kind of crazy concept, and they're doing X, Y, and I was like, so I thought it was very like experimental, and I I I didn't uh, bad actor, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't do my research, and, right. and uh, so on the day, like you know, I showed up to the studio um, after being locked out of my house and uh, locked out of we were working on another show. And, um, and I was doing business at the time I wanted to get into the nightclub business and I was wanting to, I had, uh, some partners and we wanted to buy a nightclub. And so the nightclub that we were doing business with just kind of as like, um, uh, how would you say it? Like we were doing our due diligence, yeah, you know, yeah. we had a promotion company we were working with them. And nonetheless, um, on the day we ended up, um, I realized that I, I left, I locked myself out of the place. So I had to go to the nightclub. And um, I had to print my, my lines because I left my lines there and I left my headshot and all the other stuff. So I had to print all my stuff. And then a VIP host uh, who was very nice and generous for doing this, uh, Johnny Ming, my, my good buddy, uh, was like, he's like, hey, I'll take you there. And this is like pre-Uber. So took me to the studio, was really cool, sat around for, you know, a good 30 minutes or so. And I went in and... Um, um, yeah, it was, uh, I think my first, I want to say my first episode was with Adam Bernstein, yeah. my first, very first audition. And so that was for Mandela. And sometimes when you go into an audition, you get a feeling like if maybe, yeah, it's it's never really comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, I, you're, you're, it always feels like you came into the audition, even if you were on time and all that. Like it, it feels like you're either you're late or you don't see something on you and, yeah. you know, but you just kind of have to get comfortable with people looking at you. Like if you're, uh, you're, you're kind of, you're the product basically. And, um, so on that day, I remember Adam, he kind of like looked at me and it was just, ah, uh. and then, you know, he went back to whatever he was doing and I did my read and, um, and, you know, um, casting director at the time was kind of like looking at him like uh well i guess we're good you know mm -hmm. and then he gave a nod and i was just like okay so i didn't think i bombed it i just thought like as an actor you get used to realizing like either someone knocked it out apart and they were a different size shade in this case gender there was something else that i wasn't mm -hmm. and they're just going through the process so that was really it. You know, got back in the car, like, okay, that was it. And then, uh, bear in mind, it's my friend's first time ever at an audition. Like, you know, and he was just in the parking lot. And the casting director comes out and jumps on the car, like, you got to come back in here. And I was like, naturally, you know, just growing up, how I did, like, I thought I was in trouble. Like, I thought, like, I you did something wrong. Did something wrong. Like, yeah. I stole the pen or something, accidentally <laughs> put it in my pocket when I was signing in. 
So I was like, yeah, what's up? And she's like, you got to get back in there. Adam wants to see you again. It's in da 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 And it was for nondescript customer. And uh, went in and it was like a whole different Adam Bernstein. And I always tease him about it. So, uh, yeah, he was very enthusiastic now uh, that I was, I guess, reading for something that was more fitting. And uh, nondescript customer um, ended up becoming um, uh, ended up becoming Victor in season wow. four. And uh, Aaron Paul was the one to break the news, you know, that this was going to be recurring because they were starting to be very uh, secretive at that point. And, you know, just said, welcome to the family. And, you know, that was kind of the, also the start of the friendship between uh, Aaron and I back then. So it was cool. It was, uh, you know, just a ride that you'll never forget. And, um, you know, compared a lot to the first film I ever did, it was really like that, that touching in terms of you know just getting close to the crew getting close to everyone it feels like summer camp that's the best way i can describe to people that have never been in uh, in film and television yeah so that, was the, that was the start was it was it natural born killers was that the first one yeah yeah actually my first yeah my first movie actually my very first movie was a, a kids film um a japanese kids film when i was very young but um yeah natural born killers was my first real show and that's when i knew i was like this is this is gonna be it you know that's cool um but yeah actually lastly just that bringing up the part of reading for something else and then it was the same thing for red dead redemption uh too i i um they created a whole dummy script and i really and i was impressed because i i really loved the script and then uh not until i got to new york did i find out what we were actually doing Again, super secretive, right. could never say anything, went on for three years uh, and never told anybody about anything. So Isn't that crazy? It's you know, it's funny. I'm really glad you mentioned that too, because my, my son's a big fan of you, Eric Jr. He's a real big fan of you and, and he's actually spoke with you a couple of times on some Instagram DMs and stuff like that. And he knows about your career, but he did not know about Red Dead until the other day, and I didn't know about it either. I'm not, I'd never say that I know I'm not the all knowing person here, but I read some stuff on your backstory at Red Dead. I said, dude, did you know that Jeremiah was in uh, was the voice of so and so in Red Dead? And he's like, oh my god! So instantly, you know, this has become the coolest person on the planet. <laughs> I mean, forget about Breaking Bad, forget about Better Call Saul, forget about Natural Born yeah. Killers. It's like that game, right? You know, so yeah. that that's cool. Oh, for my wife, she's you know very uh, rarely nerds out on things, and she was. Uh, just to kind of show you where she's at when she first met um, Vince Gilligan, look it over at her to see if she's <laughs> watching. When she, listen, when she first met Vince Gilligan, she was uh, she was like starstruck, but oh, yeah? not because of our show, but because of uh, X Files. Oh, wow! So right. she's like losing it, like, oh my god, you know, he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, he's just he's just such a cool guy, and he's like. And then she's like, X-Files. And it took him, like, he was surprised. He didn't even expect that. And um, so nonetheless, she's also, point being, is she's a huge fan of uh, Red Dead as well. That's cool. But she does it, like, she's like nature girl. She'll go and, like, hunt and, or not even hunt. She'll go and, like, fish and uh, camp out. Never kills anybody. Now, how about uh, you? Do you like to fish? Me? Yeah. Personally? Yeah. I've only been maybe a handful of times, but the times that I've been, I've had fun. So, so you know what? You 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 and I share some similar things, and your wife and my wife share some similar things. She She's a, she's like a fisherman like Bob Azumi here in Canada. You know, like yeah. she, she is that good. And myself, she'll, wow. take, she'll take me out, and it's like, if I don't catch a fish the minute my, my uh, you know, uh, hook and, and Bob or, you know, my weight goes in the water, I'm like, I want to go home. You know, meanwhile, she'll be out there all day long till she's like fried crispy. And, you know, she'll have all kinds of fish. I just, I don't have the patience for it. And I was like that way, that way with photography for a while too. When I, and before I started to get better at it, I, I was impatient. I wouldn't wait for the shot, but I guess I think we're learning a lot from this, this year from 2020 that we got to slow our lives down and just acknowledge everything that's around us and have some patience. Right. Truly. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's the same thing with golfing. Oh, I, love I never golf. thought I would, you know, I never thought I'd enjoy golfing and, and then, uh, you know, later in life, got into it. So. What's your favorite thing about golf? Um, you know, I think it's uh, for me. It was it was uh, my 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 dad and I. We um, you know, we never really connected when I was I was young, and then it was like a, a thing that when I became uh, an adult, and I don't know, it was interesting. It was kind of like he was. Uh, uh, we got a lot closer 
you know, after I was out of the house and everything else. And, and that was one of the things that we do to bond. So to be honest, like my, my dad is, is probably one of, uh, one of the key reasons why I started playing and I'd have so much fun because it was something that we would, we both enjoyed. We got into, we had the bug for many years and we'd meet in different cities and play and it was, it was cool. So, nice. um, but now I haven't, I haven't had a lot of, a lot of time, so oh, I, I gotta you. get it back out of there. Paid, played maybe twice this year. So I look at golf though, and it's funny because my son and I drove by a golf course tonight. And this is so cool that this come up because it wasn't on the itinerary for tonight. We drove by a golf course tonight. It's one of our local ones in our in our bigger city closest to us. I said I'd like to take you there sometime and play golf. He's never played before, and I'm not I'm not great, but I I was I had beginner's luck at it, and I do find golf is a game that you know as long as you go into it with an open mind, it can be a beginner's luck game. And some people may, yeah. may argue with me on that, but I, I had good luck with it. And I've used golf as a, a way to adapt my life. I, everything I do in life, I compare it to a golf game. So let's say tomorrow, like I play guitar, but let's say tomorrow I want to pick up um, the piano, okay? Let's say I've never played piano before. So the, the, I'm not going to try to do some kind of a fancy caprice tomorrow on my first day of, of playing the piano. I'm going to learn the, learn some a couple chords, right? So with golf, you know, the first time I go out on golf, I'm, I'm not going to try to hit an eagle on my first uh, day out. Uh, if I hit five over par, or if, you know, even if it goes off the scorecard, we can't even score it anymore. That's fine. The next day I go out, maybe I can hit three over par, and then maybe the next day, maybe maybe a month from now, my goal is to maybe hit par on this hole. You know, so it's it's just realistic expectations and put a challenge yeah. on yourself, but don't put real unrealistic expectations on yourself. Yeah, no, you're hundred percent right. I mean, I think it's. I, w- I was listening to another actor on an interview today, and he was. Uh, he's a martial artist and he was talking about how, you know, with martial arts, just like golf or anything else, it's when you like, let's say you throw a good punch, it's effortless in the sense that it's not hard. It's just like a golf swing, you know? So, um, yeah, I remember for years I was working at my, uh, my golf swing and, um, did a show called Yellowstone. And, and right after that, I started really getting into, um, into shooting and doing a uh, competitive, did some competitive shooting three gun and, you know, just training for that. I had to be proficient because we didn't know what guns we were going to use on the day. So I had to get good at, uh, had to be proficient with a handgun, shotgun, rifle, and then transitions. Hmm. So boom, 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 Touch you know, and then handgun and then shotgun. And so, uh, it's so uh, my goal was to, to get in a tournament at, after that and and i did and i was i was pretty happy i, I placed within like the the top 13 which was wow you know there was a, a lot of guys and for a first time it was it was pretty good so um but I, I don't think it had to do a lot with me it was more the training right you know i trained with some good guys and i was just i was just on fire yeah know? lots of good experience as well too i'm i'm kind of afraid of guns and in, like in Canada, yeah. with you know different laws here in Canada, as you know, as far as open carries and things like that, or in the states and stuff yeah. like that. And, I've, I, and I was in Air Cadets as a kid, and I got to shoot some weapons. But I, I kind of fear guns a little bit. So one of these days, I'd love to have some formal training, just so I, first of all, I could lose the fear, and then on yep. top of that, you know, learn how to have good self defense and stuff. But here's here's another question over in the chat from Matty Ermintrout. Uh okay. and this this is a good one. I, this is a very good question. I know you'll appreciate this because this is a family question. <laughs> Uh, question for Jeremiah: How did you come to find out your daughter's name would be used in season five of Better Call Saul? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Um, and yeah, that, that's a that's a good. Uh, always brings a, a, a smile on my face. Um, we were actually in Chicago, um, where my my wife is from. She's what? Well, she's sneaking. She's sneaking. <laughs> you should. Do you want to help me with this question? Oh, Allie? she's got to jump on camera. Tell her she's got to jump on camera. <laughs> <laughs> she, she'll make a camera. She's covered in paint. Um, I can. I figured that. But, probably, I'm covered in paint. I'm not going to go on camera. <laughs> yeah, we were actually we were headed to dinner in, in Chicago. I had I was there for business and and um, I want to say we were in between episodes and uh, I got a call and this one I do know was Melissa Bernstein and Melissa called and she said, "Hey, um, you know, we just wanted to run this by you." And I was like. Immediately, I thought I was like, "Oh, they're gonna kill me again or do something to me." That was what I. There out. she is. There she is. <laughs> um, so uh, that's what I thought, and and we were on our way to dinner, and um, I don't know. It was really emotional for me. Actually, I didn't think it would be that emotional, um, just because they, they 
said, you know, the character of reference or the way that she's going to be mentioned is this, um, you know, 90 some year old um, woman who's an artist and the way they painted it out, it just, I even get kind of emotional thinking about it now. I mean, I was just thinking like my wife's or my, my daughter's life um, years from now, you know, 90 some years from now, we're far, far gone. You know, um, this all is, who knows? Um, and just, just to think that deep, it, it really, it, it made me kind of emotional to think about it. And um, I, I agreed to it and I said, yeah, you know, let's, my wife was right there and, uh, you know, we, we did want to take a read and, and kind of take it in, but, you know, we preliminary kind of uh, gave a, gave a thumbs up and, um, but it was definitely an honor. I mean, it was, it was cool how it was brought up and she was there. Um, we were in the living room and I, my wife, my daughter and I, when the, when it first aired mm -hmm. and she heard her name and she was just like, what <laughs> what's going on? That's so, so cute. Uh, it's pretty cool. That is yeah. awesome. Yeah. And I mean, it's something, I mean, it's especially cool for a, for a child, but your good friend Max as well too. I mean, Max with his name yeah. being used for characters, that's really, really cool, isn't it? It is cool. Yeah, it is cool. It's cool how they kind of blend those universes where it's, it, it made it really personal to me. You yeah. Know? And, and I think the whole crew, when, when my, uh, my daughter was born, I remember we were actually filming that night and, um, and I didn't want to say anything, but it was like, we were, we were like almost right away. I got a call from my wife and she's like, yeah, we're, I'm headed, headed in. And, uh, I just, <laughs> I felt like I had to tell somebody yeah, and, then Corey, somebody get and, the chest. Like, and then word got around and they're like, Oh, you got it. He, he can't be here. Like, you know, let's shoot him out. <laughs> so they were really cool. And they, they shot all my, they changed the shooting order. And, uh, so I could, I could go and join my wife. Isn't that um, something? For, my daughter's birth. So that's incredible. Yeah. I, I, and, yeah. and a little bit before the program ends, I want to talk about your YouTube channel, but I'm going to, I'm going to jump to it just for okay. a second because of one thing, just because we're talking about family for a second and something yeah. I watched, I, I told you this in an email, but I watched the video that you sent me. It was kind of like the, one of the coolest ones on your YouTube channel where you're doing that. Max was there with you at the pop-up at the cafe, uh, the, the yeah. club, the, the breaking yeah. bad, um, uh, uh, establishment there, the, the bar. And breaking bad experience. Yeah. So. Breaking bad experience. So thank you for correcting me. There we go. I, I forgot the name of it. Um, but at the end, you know, you talk to, uh, you know, Brian Cranston and, and Aaron Paul jump in surprise visit and come see you. And you say to him on the camera, you say, Brian, um, can any, you know, you're, you're a father, any, any advice you could give to, you know, a, a dad, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, Brian's words of advice were love the mother. And I was like, oh my yeah. God, you know, like, and I, I had to like kind of wipe a tear. And then I, I told my wife, Sandra, I said, I said, you got to watch us. Come and watch us. I mean, the, the, the yeah. first part's all cool and everything's all awesome. But what do you see what Brian says at the end to him? It was really, really cool. So we'll talk more about that in depth in a minute as well. Um, it was great how they, and we were actually, we were just talking about that. Yeah. Josh, you may have seen Josh on the, uh, if you watch any of the Breaking yes. Dad episodes. That's, hey, there he is. Josh <laughs> over there. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we were just talking about it. We're like, we had the coolest trip and like the coolest schedule for 2020. Like all these things we were going to make happen. And, and uh, of course, you know, just we went down the toilet. <laughs> yeah. I so, know. I know. Um, well, yeah. fingers crossed for 2021. I mean, as long as we're all smart and we're safe, yep. right? You know, it's, it's just be safe out there. And I guess I, get along. it sounds like, I mean, uh, Giancarlo did an interview today. A lot of our friends, Karina actually told me about it. She was watching the interview. I didn't see it yet, but, um, you know, Giancarlo was saying there's uh, uh, like, they're thinking, you know, I mean, who knows what uh, new year's brings, but thinking March might be the return to, to shooting. So, you know, that, that'd be awesome. Fingers crossed on that. Yeah. Um, another question from our good friend, Lori, one of our uh, YouTube channel members, uh, she says, uh, and we talked about Yellowstone, so this is perfect fitting time. She says, can you tell us about your time in Yellowstone? So you did a little bit about yeah. that, but she says, were you able to interact with the other Jimmy McGill, a.k.a. Kevin Costner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, it's a funny story. The, the first time that I, I walked on to, um, uh, one of the first times I was on set on, the, um, on Yellowstone, I, you know, Kevin comes up, and we haven't met like there was a few miss missed opportunities there and they were shooting quick and fast that first that first episode so um 
you know, and you know, you never know. Like, I mean, I'm, I don't think I'm some big shot actor or anything. So I, I'm always very careful, you know, mm-hmm. like I've had an opportunity to be a lead on, on a movie and, and it's a lot of, it's a, it's a tremendous amount of stress. And, and some people are really good at taking that stress and just being super cool and nice and making it, you know, you kind of create the corporate culture and he's, he's that kind of guy. Um, so when I first, uh, first met him you know just kind of chill you know just not trying to make a big you know this is kevin costner um <laughs> and uh you know and he comes up and um he comes right up to me and he's like you know he's like hey he's like um or not hey he's just uh, <laughs> he's just um he's like hi jeremiah he's like i'm kevin costner You're like and you I'm don't know like, right <laughs> yeah 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 that's right um but yeah i thought of the references as yeah. far as um you know the 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 resemblance um but yeah he's such a cool guy and um you know uh it was it was an honor to work with him and and it's just crazy like sometimes just those those interactions the people that that you get to work with um and yeah he's definitely in there the oh, first time i met robert redford i remember i couldn't say anything and never would i think that you know i'd be had worked on a show with him and so yeah it's just been great to be i'm i'm really just like a fan so sometimes you know when i'm on these shows uh i'm i'm a cinema like to think of myself as a, a, a cinema nerd so it's like i just i love being like in the zone where we're an army and we're creating you know an army of people creating a vision and i think that's one of the things that draws me to construction as well um but yeah, Yellowstone is such a good show. And, um, you know, going back to like just people that I've nerded out on before, the same thing with uh, Alejandro Nuratu. I worked with him on a movie called 21 Grams. And um, I was just super excited because uh, I was a big fan of Amores Perros. And, um, and so that was, that was a big like, that was a big thing. And then meeting Benicio del Toro and that was, uh, that was a huge one. And then just weird things have happened in life. Like we, right after that, we wrapped and we're back in LA separate. Of course, the show's wrapped and done and, and we're on the 10 freeway. And if you've ever been on the 10, it's like, you know, just a craziness. And my lane westbound comes to a stop. His lane eastbound comes to a stop and he's sitting there and his, he's driving and he looks over at me. He's like, ah, you know, and he's wearing a, um, a 21 grams hat. Oh, and he just kind of tips his hat. And we both go, our, our, you know, we were just like working together the week before. So some of this is it's just nuts. And um, but, yeah, that show, I was I was super excited because um, I'm a big fan of uh, Taylor Sheridan. OK. And, um, you know, so as a storyteller that he was a guy that I have my own little list. and He's, he's definitely on that list. Isn't that but, something? Uh, well, the cool thing about this, and this puts it, puts it in really good perspective as well, too, because at the end of the day, it goes to show people, like, we're all watching you right now. We're watching all the guests on the show each week that we t- we're talking to here on Gilliver. So we just all love, including yourself. And, you know, we're big fans of you and big fans of them and big fans of this person. And yet you're just as much of a fan of that person. So it, it's it's kind yeah. of a 360, right? We're all human, yeah. right? And you have fans. And then the, the, probably the cool thing for you is the fact that, okay, you're looking up to these actors that you're working with. And then, you know, like the Kevin Costner's come up and say hi to you. And they're just talking to you like a normal, everyday human being, you know? And like, yeah. you're fitting right in. It's, that's got to be like almost like, yeah. wow, right? Yeah. End of the day, I mean, it's work. And so yeah. it's kind of... Um, Respect. You know, it, and so it's it's very... I'd say there's very few people that i kind of really nerd out and freak out about you know Mm -hmm. um but then there's just certain people you meet you're just like oh you know um but you know there's also an etiquette as well like i don't know you run into like i was on uh, csi miami and worked with um uh uh, didn't one or two uh, one or two episodes i believe just like i think max was also on the show Mm -hmm. um but um, Adam Rodriguez, he was, he, we ran into him when a friend was in town and a friend of mine was like, oh, where's that? He's like, you should go say hi. You know, and I was like, yeah. nah, that doesn't really work like that. He's yeah. like, but you, you guys work together. It's like, if I saw somebody I worked with, like, you know, I'd, I'd go say it. And I'm like, yeah, but it's not really, you know, he's with his family and, you know, and so afterwards he, he 
he was done with di- uh, breakfast, he came over. Um, it's like, hey, bro, why did you say what's up? It's like I saw you sitting over here, and I'm like, yeah, but I, you know, didn't didn't really. Uh, it's kind of a really code. It's kind of a code. A code, yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what's weird is like for the show. So yeah, we nerd out about certain, but our show is really within the industry. Like people nerd out about our show, which is really cool to see. So, um, you know, I was, I'm on a show right now. They keep bringing me back re- recurring on um, a show called Bosch. And, um, um, the producers afterwards came up to, to me and they were just like, Hey, do you mind if we get a, uh, can we get a selfie? And I was like, yeah, for sure. And they're like, we're huge fans of breaking bad, better call Saul. So within like the industry breaking bad, better call Saul, it, it's really kind of, uh, uh, it's a big favorite within the industry. You know, yeah. So, um, nothing, nothing wrong with giving respect to, you know, each oh, other. Oh, I hear you on that. And I've had, I've had it happen a lot of times. People are like, I, I go to a convention every year in Anaheim called NAM. It's for the musicians, right? It's kind of like yeah. the consumer electronics show for, for, for music geeks, right? You get to yeah. see all the new gear and stuff like that. And it's, I mean, every music celebrity that you could ever, ever loved growing up is there. And some, sometimes I'll take some photos. A lot of times I will. I'll probably take a lot of photos. But s- sometimes people will say, oh, you, you said you met so-and-so. Why didn't you take a picture? And like, you know what? The, the opportunity didn't present itself. And I had a conversation. And I know I can't share that conversation with you. But I will always yeah. remember that conversation. So if I met you, let's say, and I didn't get a chance to take a picture with you, you and I are chatting about something. I'm always going to remember that conversation. And no one can take that away from you. Because, I mean, you might get a photo and you yeah. might delete it off your phone. Right? Yeah. But you'll never forget that conversation. Yeah, and, and it's good that you say that. Sometimes um, I have a feeling like it's like the last thing I want it to be is for it to feel transactional. Like mm-hmm. when I meet fans of the show, like I don't I don't want them to feel. And it's really weird because sometimes it, it's like um, I don't know. Sometimes depending on if you know, there's different circumstances. I'll just say like if you meet a, a favorite actor, keep in mind you know they may have just got off of either the worst flight or. They may have food poisoning. You don't know, you know. Mm-hmm. It, so if they're being very, especially now with COVID, it's like, you know, you, you never know. I know. But, um, you know, that being said, you know, I think it's, I'll take the initiative sometimes. Like, I'll tell, like, if a, if a fan is talking and they're just kind of like, oh, my gosh, am I going to get the photo? You know, I'm like, Here, come on, let's take this photo real quick. Nice. And let's keep talking, break break you know? the ice and, yeah, make them feel a little bit yeah. more at home and not, not so nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because I mean, it's uh, you know, you, you um, it, it can be nerve wracking. Yeah, I think we all go through that. Oh you yeah, know, just meeting somebody that you've, you, you know, you've uh, you've seen or you admire their work or the body of work that they're within. Exactly. Here's a couple yeah. more good questions here as well. Too, we're getting close to okay. the end of the show. Uh, this is a, co- a question from Urban. She's a big gamer, and she okay. says, a "Question for Jeremiah: You are amazing." As we talked about Red Dead a moment ago, uh, yeah. you're uh, amazing as Eagle Flies. Would you would you like uh, to be featured in more games? Yeah, actually. So Rockstar, that was such a great experience, and um, so the answer is yes, absolutely. Yeah um who knows let's see if uh you know may pop up on um uh, i don't know maybe a grand theft auto or something six yeah but, that'd be cool <laughs> yeah that was something that actually michael and i both you know uh, michael mando and i we both talked a lot about was uh the video game experience you know because he's he's played a pretty huge character oh yeah us. yeah and um and it's fun i mean they, so they put all of these little sensors little balls all over you and um and then you know you have a camera which is like mounted pretty yep, much like yeah, right like in your yeah. face. And then uh, you know so you have this whole motion cap contraption, and it's just it's a different universe because you get used to doing your your lines, and you're kind of you know your your frame. And then in this sense, it's like you have this whole football field of. Um, ability to walk around within and, and, and do your, your thing. So it's, it was, it was very cool. It was really different. And, um, I, I definitely, I think I'd do it again, especially with that team. There's such like, they were such great people and great. Um, yeah. Great company yeah, did that out in New York and it was, it was cool. Cool experience. I saw Michael Mando tweet today. He says, uh, 
Uh, what was it he was talking? So Netflix is looking for uh, suggestions for game adaptions to, to movies. And he goes, I can think of one, you know, so that's pretty cool. Yep. Um, yeah. Here's a comment, which, and you've, I'm just going to read the comment just because you've already answered the question from Mrs. Wexler. It says, uh, how did you land the role of Victor in Breaking Bad? So we talked about that. I just wanted to acknowledge her. And from Bob Rich, um, and this is good too, a different spin on, on something that was asked earlier. So we, as someone else asked earlier about, you know, your favorite scenes, and it didn't necessarily have to be your scenes, but Bob is saying, and you're, in your work on Breaking Bad and Better Call saw what were some of the most powerful scenes that you've performed in now obviously the box cutting scene was pretty intense um but maybe the scenes that from both shows that you uh, the question again the most powerful scenes that you've performed in to you oh like most powerful in terms of the maybe emotional emotional, emotional or maybe yeah. physical maybe okay yeah i would say for sure you know when we um we talked a little bit about natural born killers and just, I think the emotion of going through that process of, um, you know, getting close to a crew, hanging out with casting crew over the course of a summer. Um, and that was, you know, that was, that was really amazing. But to be honest, even certain things within the process of casting, believe it or not, you know, um, and it's just kind of, Kind of nice to see uh, there was a casting director that I that I'm very fond of and and um, she she brings me in as a wild card here and there so uh, oddly I'm proud of things sometimes that I didn't even get a uh, I didn't even land the role and this was one of those those cases where she brought me in as a sheriff so and so sheriff Walker or whoever and. Um, you know, connected with the character, but the, the emotional part was that like the, the demographic was completely opposite of who I was. And, um, you know, you, you, you want to break through as an actor and be recognized for your talent. And sometimes, you know, you, I guess uh, in our industry, you get pigeonholed to like, you know, you're this color and you're this race and this, age and so you fall within these gaps and so she was really she's one to bend those um those uh, prejudices and so it's that that's a pr something that i think i that makes me emotional and thinking about but definitely my first uh you know we talked about natural born killers um there was a period in time where i didn't know if i was going to come back to acting and i went to college with the intention of becoming uh, a director writer and uh, went through a whole program intended on going to UCLA film school, didn't get in. And, uh, and then my first business was called kind of falling flat. So I went home and just felt like a loser, you know, like <laughs> I'm moving back in home and I'm 25 years old and I didn't know what I was going to do. And uh, spent the summer with my grandparents and uh, helped them herd sheep and spent time that I just, I'll never out, like I could never take that back no. and it was uh just just a great experience and then you know a few weeks later um just the way it works is you know back in in town I get a call for Lords of Dogtown right after that I, I got a call from a director and um I thought that he we met we had a meeting and I didn't know it was intentionally for a project an acting project I thought he was more interested in me potentially as a writer at that point. And he ended up adapting a story I told him about when I was uh, 17 years old and um, caught with a gun, a real story. And, um, and he, he included it into the script. And I thought that was it. So I thought that's why he called, but he called to offer me a role. So two weeks later, I'm in like a open field herding sheep. And that one always sticks with me. Um, that was definitely a special moment. And, um, you know, we did a movie I mentioned with uh, Robert Redford and, you know, the whole process was pretty emotional. Um, certain points, the character was really volatile and kind of going through a, it's a coming of age story. And, um, my character was, was really in this juxtapose where he lived in, he lived this crazy life, but now had a kid on the way. And it was just all of this stuff that like, you know, he was just such a sensitive, volatile character that there were a lot of moments, but 
one of the coolest moments was when we wrapped, we ended up giving um, Giancarlo Esposito um, a, uh, an award at a film show and uh, Robert Redford. Uh, so it was crazy because it was like me, Robert Redford, Bob and, uh, and uh, Giancarlo, you know, all there. And I was just like, this is nuts. You yeah. Know? And, um, and then when we premiered at Sundance, the same thing, like he, you know, in- introduced me and I just, I, some of these things, it's, it's like, um, surreal, just things I wouldn't ever have thought that I'd live to see, you know, it, that yeah. was, I had a crazy life when I was young and just living to see some of these moments. And, um, and as an actor, it, you really can't, you, there could be something in a scene and it's a very, maybe it's a small thing and mm-hmm. it means something to you. And it may not even be a scene that they end up picking, but it may be a take that was just really more for you. Yeah. And maybe it, they didn't pick that scene, but it did something to your character and it, it changed the trajectory of uh, where, where you normally would be. And I remember one specific scene where I was, I, I didn't know if I was out of going out of bounds, but um, Brian and I, we, we were rehearsing the scene in, in the super lab and it was uh, this, there's a scene where he, in season three, he stops me um, and I kind of, I don't know if this is right to do, but I, at the time I was like, can you just grab my arm? And he was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and that's just kind of how the whole, the whole show leads and everybody were. And so in the scene, you know, cause it felt like he wanted to stop me, mm-hmm. but I, I think he didn't want to break that boundary and, and he did and it worked. And that, that was kind of important for me because I realized like, I, you know, even though you're not, um, when you're not a lead, you, you still need to be able to be, your character needs kind of that, that push pull as yeah, well. Yeah. You know, you, you can't push rope like they say. So, um, yeah, those are a few things that I think definitely just immediately stick out and, I know when I'm driving home, I'll think of a whole bunch of. Oh no, that's other no, that's now. good though. That's good. <laughs> and that's the thing too. Like you, your character isn't just whether you're not like if you're not like the main character in the scene, you're not just supposed to be a transition. You know, you're not just to be yeah. here to help get this. You know, there's there's got to be some give and take, as you said. So two yeah. last points we'll make here. I want to end on your YouTube okay. channel, and this is something yeah. even more important than your YouTube channel because it's a very a, a great statement about your family. I don't know, and the YouTube channel comes secondary, which is great. But Lisa Masters says Jeremiah and his wife do a lot uh, to help the people who live on the reservation in New Mexico through the pandemic. Please recognize this and thank them. So yes, on behalf of everyone, uh, we thank you and thank yeah, you for mentioning that. My wife, she's she? right. You're in the frame, Allie. Tell, tell her she missed a spot, by the way. I see a, she missed a spot uh, back there. Yeah, she's she, that's her style. She's very like low key. Anyone that knows her, she's behind the scenes and. And she's a, a silent force, but yeah, she um, during the pandemic she started taking um, seven to ten carloads, um, truckloads of of goods back to uh, the nearby. You know, one probably the 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 highest infection rate in one of the most deadliest areas in the world, which uh, you know part of my lineage. I'm Navajo, mm-hmm. um, and on my mother and my dad's side, and then I'm also Omaha from Nebraska, and so. Um, you know, naturally our heart went there, to, you know, to that place. And, and, um, but she would go every weekend and take, um, box of, uh, just boxes of, of goods, of cleaning supplies. And this very basement, she ended up at the end of filling up completely. And now I think the week before last, uh, they, they took 40,000 pounds of, um, of fresh produce and um so you know it's not something we really brag about no you know it's, it's something that we, we you just take do very, you just do you know it's just yeah you just do and i think that's really what we're trying to do is yeah. just do some of these things and and hopefully it, you know encourage and bring other people along but she's been the one i'm i'm really kind of uh you know i'm her co-pilot in that sense yeah know? so um Aren't we yeah blessed? It's, that's a part of dream lab which is also um you know, kind of uh, goodwill and there's a nonprofit component to it as well. Nice. Yeah, aren't we, yeah. aren't we blessed to have these women that, I mean, basically we would be nothing without them, would we? Yeah, you absolutely. Know? We're, we're blessed. Absolutely. I, I've seen some of the and interviews. Shout out to Lisa Masters. 
Yes. Thank you, Lisa, for bringing that up. So we'll wrap up here. And, and I, I want to apologize to everyone for some uh, many questions that we probably missed. My beautiful better half, Sandra Lee, is not feeling very well. I know she's, she's trying to listen a little bit upstairs, but she's not feeling well. And she always funnels the questions to me. Even though I've got the yeah. chat open, she'll text them to me so I don't miss anything. And I've missed a lot, so I'm so sorry. Um, but I want to talk about the we'll YouTube do a post. Yeah, we'll like, do yeah. Take some of the questions and then I'll, I'll record them. Okay. At another time. Okay, okay, that'd be that. great. I'll send, I'll send you something. That'd be fantastic. Thank you. I'll go back to the chat and get a, grab a few of them for sure. But let's okay. talk about Breaking Dad TV. I mean, you sent me that, and when I yeah. saw that, and I mean, I'm so I'm embarrassed I did not know about it. And I mean, I'm uh, oh. I've subscribed right away, turned on oh. post notifications, but I love it. Tell us a little bit um, what fans can expect to see on that channel and what your goal is with the channel. So you know, the pandemic kind of punched Breaking Dad in the face. Um, but now that we're, we're things are kind of you know normalizing to a certain extent, yeah. Um, Breaking Dad was uh, you know kind of I, I don't know. I guess it you know this period in time in life where um, m- more for I guess just documenting some of the experiences and and when I first started, I thought we're gonna see an experience such cool things and i want i want to document it but i want to share it at the same time so (laughs) obviously it started off to a really great start and then we kind of like i said we got punched in the face with the pandemic um but going forward it definitely is going to be you know just this interesting place now currently that we're all going into but also just you know i think as as a whole people wonder as an actor like what what's the regular daily life like, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And, uh, you know, most people, most actors, you know, when they're not acting, what are they doing? And uh, I'm not really sure. I, I, I can only share what, what my experiences are. Um, But, you know, like right now we got a lot going on. We're, we're uh, at least working hard to get in this coffee shop open. Um, I'm working every day with my construction company and trying to do what I can on the, the pandemic efforts and in, in making sure that we develop and create good infrastructure. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot going on. And of course uh, our, our daughter and everything there is, is at the, the, the top of the priority. Um, we recently got a pull along. We have a, um, uh, what is like an Airstream kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and we, uh, we got that because we love to travel and, um, for us, we are, you know, we're more careful just because we have um, parents and folks that have um, uh, health conditions. So we thought, you know, having a good pull along the way, not only to bring, you know, my family to the job site, but also to set. Yeah. So um, you'll be seeing a lot more of that for sure. We got to rev up a little bit. Awesome. Well, yeah. it, it, it's such a pleasure getting just to look inside your family. I mean, you have a beautiful family. I mean, obviously a very, very hard working wife. Uh, all the success to you guys uh, with the, with the the coffee the coffee shop there and stuff like that as well too. And I know it's for a very good cause. It's gonna be fantastic. And listen, I plan on doing this show for quite some time. It's gonna be well through uh, you know season six and beyond. So open invitation for you to come back anytime you want. We'll arrange it not on date night. And please express my <laughs> apologies for messing up date night tonight. I would say you you can tell she can say you can hate the mustache guy in Canada, but I don't have a mustache anymore. I'm not sure if you saw the old oh, shows. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's, that's what it is. I'm dressing up as Peter Chris for Kiss to, uh, from Kiss tomorrow for Halloween. So ah, it's, it's a okay. virtual. We're Here not going go. out of the house. I'm a guitar player. And I'm being Peter Chris. It's almost like being the Aquaman of superhero collection, you know. But uh, hey, someone's got to be Peter Chris. I love Peter Chris. I'm just kidding. But it's been a pleasure having you here. I just want to say a few, a few thank yous here. And first of all, thank you, Jeremiah, for joining us. Thank you to your wife as well, too. Um, I made notes because I will forget. Thank you to all of our new channel members here on the on the channel. If you want to become a member, there's all kinds of cool stuff we get to do. There's exclusive live streams for you. And we're going to have Zoom parties. And every once in a while, we'll throw some invitations even to people like yourself. And if you want to come and crash a Zoom party and say hi to some of the fans, you're welcome. Not obligated. Awesome. Thank you to our Patreon um, uh, supporters as well, too. Our PayPal donators, our subscribers, Super Chatters, all those people that buy our merchandise. We are very, very blessed. Thank you to Sandra Lee. Even though she's not uh, joining us tonight, she's sick. And her uh, hopefully she feels better. Ladybug and all of our moderators in the chat, thank you for helping us very, very much. 
Also, we have the, tonight's the last night to give away uh, to enter the contest to win a Hector Salamanca uh, bobblehead from Royal Bobbles and Bobbleheads.com. Go over to our in- Instagram at Instagram.com slash Inside the Gilliverse. Find that little picture video of Hector Salamanca. Follow us, retweet it, and we'll pick a winner tomorrow. We'll let you people know. Uh, next week, we've got uh, Julian uh, Bonfiglio, uh, sound guy, you know, from <laughs> Better Call Saul. Looking mm-hmm. forward to having him on the show. And uh, we'll have the po- audio podcast version of tonight's show up probably in a few hours because I don't sleep. I get off the air and I go record an audio podcast. We'll have that up as well. Listen, I'm going to say goodbye to you off the air. Thank you so much. This has been an absolute awesome Friday evening. And happy Halloween to everybody. Be safe out there. If you don't have to go out, please don't. But uh, if you do, be responsible out there and have a fun, safe trick-or-treating, however you do it, virtual or in person or whatever that may be. And uh, we'll say goodbye to you off the air. Everyone, see you next week. Happy Halloween. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for uh, watching and... We appreciate uh, all of your support and everything. So thank you from us as well. See you soon, everyone. Until next time, cheers. Thanks again for tuning in to Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. Be sure to check back each week for more great discussions and interviews with cast and crew from Breaking Bad El Camino and Better Call Saul. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Oh,